Hello, uh, friend. Uh, today we're going to talk about the history of uh, the special guardianship order. Um, generally, people uh, believe that um, special guardianship order affords the special guardian uh, the um, right to exercise PR to the exclusion parental to exercise parental responsibility to the exclusion of other people that is correct but it's worth uh, reminding ourselves how uh, the concept of uh, special guardianship came about following the implementation of the 1976 Act um, that is the Adoption Act 1976. Further substantive reform of important aspects of the law of adoption did not occur until the passage of the, two ta of the uh, Adoption and Chil uh, Children and Adoption Act 2002. There were, however, uh, in the meanwhile, a number of developments in the legislative field. There was the implementation in October 1991 of the 1989 Children Act. Uh, in October 1992, a consultative uh, document was published by the Department of Health titled The Review of Adoption Law a report to ministers of an interdepartmental working group. This included a discussion of difficulties involved in adoption by relatives and proposed that there should be a power to appoint what was described as a child intervivos guardian who was to have all the rights, duties and powers of a guardian appointed under Section 5 of the 1989 Act apart from the power to agree to the child's adoption. In December 2000, the government published a white paper entitled Adoption, a New Approach. This followed the, the fundamental review of adoption policy and practice initiated uh, by the government earlier in the same year. The executive summary expressed the, gov the government's belief that more can and should be done to promote the wider use of adoption. A sentiment echoed by other governmental documents. The concept of special guardianship was introduced in uh, one of the governmental papers and it described it as follows. Adoption is not always appropriate for children who cannot return to their birth parents some older children do not wish to be legally separated from their birth families. Adoption may not be best for some children being cared for on a permanent basis by members of their wider birth family. Some minority ethnic communities have religious and cultural difficulties with adoption as it is set out in the law. Unaccompanied asylum seeking children may also need to secure permanent homes but have strong attachment to their families abroad. All these children deserve the same chance as any other 
to enjoy the benefits of a legally secure, stable, permanent placement that promotes a supportive, lifelong relationship with their carers, where the court decides that it is in their best interest. In order to meet the needs of these children, where adoption is not appropriate, and to modernize the law so as to reflect the religious and cultural diversity of our country today, the government believes there is a case to develop a new legislative option to provide permanence short of the legal separation involved in adoption. This view was strongly supported by respondents to the consultation. The government would, will legislate to create this new option which could be called special guardianship. It will only be used to provide permanence for those children for whom adoption is not appropriate and where the court decides it is in the best interest of the child or young person, it will give the carer clear responsibility for all aspects of caring for the child or young person and for making the decision to do with their upbringing. The child or young person will no longer be looked after by the local authority. Provide a firm foundation on which to build a lifelong permanent relationship between the carer and the child or young person. Preserve the legal link between the child or young person and their birth family. Be accompanied by proper access to a full range of support services, including, where appropriate, financial support. We will work with the key interest groups and stakeholders to develop the detail of our proposal to be included in the new legislation. This governmental document gave what it described as an illustrative case study. In a document uh, unpublished by Selwyn and Stur Jess uh, called Achieving Permanency. Proposal for UK Policy and in the it was uh, prepared in the year 2000 and it gives the following illustration J13 and S9 have been living in the care of the same foster carer for some time. They came into care as a result of Jane disclosing sexual abuse and are unable to return home. The foster carers and the children would like to remain together, but Jay does not want to be adopted. She wants to keep her birth name, have contact with some members of her birth family, but live with her foster carers. Special guardianship would provide her and her sister with a permanent home within their foster family. So basically, this is how the concept of special guardianship evolved and came to life. The provisions relating to special guardianship orders are set out in section 14A to G of the Children Act 1989, section 14A, subsection 1 and subsection 2 of the Children Act 1989 introduces the new form of order and provides that a special guardian must be aged 
18 or over and must not be a parent of the child in question. Uh, section 14a, subsection 3 to 5 deals with the identity of those entitled to apply for an order as of right and those who require the court's leave to apply. Section 14a, subsection 4 applies section 9, subsection 3 of the Children Act, which Restrict the right of a local authority foster parent to apply for leave. I hope you have found this uh, uh, short history of the special guardianship uh, useful. Please leave your comment and um, if you require any video requiring any subject, please let us know and we will endeavour to consider producing such a video. Thank you.